You know, honestly, I wanted to just kind of leave everyone with some practical tip. Allah Azza wa tells us in the Quran that those who seek huda, guidance, will be guided. Here's the thing, if you want to change, Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah, he says something beautiful. He says, إِذَا الْمَرْءُ كَانَتْ لَهُ فِكْرَةً فَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ عِبْرَةً When a person is really deeply involved in some sort of thought, when something is, is heavy on his mind, heavy on his heart, then everything around him will be a guide towards that thing. You love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything around you has meaning all of a sudden. Every single thing. You really have a sense of urgency, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the way to change. Because you know what, at the end of the day, it's different for everybody. All of us have our different demons. And every single problem has its specific solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides you to that. But the first thing you have to have is a sense of urgency. Don't worry about anyone else. Don't worry about what other people are doing. As Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ إِمْرَأً شَغَلَتْهُ عُيُوبُهُ عَنْ عُيُوبِ النَّاسِ May Allah have mercy on a person who is too busy with his own faults to be worried about anybody else's faults. A sense of urgency. I've got to make my relationship right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe tomorrow. It could be very, very, very soon. I need to make sure that when I meet him, I'm prepared for that interview. So I just typed up five things. These are five tips. If you want to take notes, you can. If you don't take notes in lectures, then you waste your time in most of your lectures. The first one, eliminate the poisons in your life that aren't allowing you to change. You have to recognize the poisons in your life that will prevent you from coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you really think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you khushu' in your salah? When your eyes have been all over the place all day and all of a sudden you think you're gonna go to salah and salah is gonna be okay? And essentially what that teaches us is that the Prophet sallallahu he taught us about this heart, this qalb. Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says what? Your qalb is a space. You fill it up with, you fill it up with anything else, you're not, going be, you're not gonna have any space for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in there. So the very first thing, the very first step to making that change as an individual, eliminate the things in your life that are a hindrance to you uh, excelling in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problem is not the qiyam. The problem is that you're doing the things that will stop your qiyam from being accepted. The problem is not your dua. The problem is what you do after dua and before dua. That's the problem that you're having. Eliminate the stains from your life. And then you would find that you naturally would start to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because once your heart becomes clean and honest, your heart starts naturally inclining towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your fitrah is to incline towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So eliminate the things that corrupt your fitrah. Number two, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. You know some people subhanAllah, they wait for really, really, really bad things to happen. They wait to see the consequences of their sins before they change those things. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. What happens is that shaitan claws you, he digs you into this hole, or you dig yourself into this hole. It's a lot harder, harder to climb out of that hole than to have taken care of it in the first place. Before you commit mistakes, you know, some people subhanAllah are just very weak. We're all weak, right? But some people just wait to mess up and then I'll try to figure it out. Put aside the flaws you already have, don't go any further. Imam al Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that every single action that you commit, every single sin that you commit goes through the following stages. Number one, it's a fatra, passing thoughts. Number two, after it's a passing thought, it becomes a fikra, settled thought. You start thinking about it. Hey, what about that? You start to entertain that thought. After I've entertained the thought enough, shaitan has told me about how great the benefits of this action are going to be. And essentially we commit sin because we think that it's going to serve some sort of benefit to us. We think it's going to give us some sort of pleasure. And it usually does for a temporary time. Then it becomes a niyyah. I have the intention to commit that sin. After I have the niyyah, the intention to commit that sin, once I've made the intention to commit something, nothing's going to stop me. Then it becomes azimah. I'm determined to commit that sin. No matter what stops me. Right, at first I was very hesitant, now I'm full force. And that's why once you have azim, it becomes amal. It surfaced, it became action. Once it becomes action, it becomes ada, becomes a bad habit. Once you have a systemized sin in your life, 
trust me, that will kill your dua, that will kill your salah, that will kill your, your opportunity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why from the dua that we, that we make, Allahumma naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati takbisu dua wa naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati tanzilu al-bala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from the sins and from the mistakes that cause our du'as to be cut off and that cause the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend upon us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that at one point you become defined by your sin. Just like at one point you become defined by your good deed. In Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that a person would tell the truth so much, he would be so truthful, hatta yuktab Allah siddiqa till he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Siddiq. Not that he told the truth one time. This is a truthful person. This is someone who's truthful in his faith. And then a person would lie so much, not that he told the lie here or there, until he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Kathab. Your name with Allah is a liar. SubhanAllah. You become defined by your traits. You become defined by your deeds. So the second thing, dear brothers and sisters, again, is that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Stop yourself before you fall into those situations. Number three, anyone ever heard of the acronym KISS? Keep it simple sunnah. Rasulullah tells us that when a person goes to his grave, but when you go to your grave, what are the things that you're praying for? What are the things that you miss? What do you really want? He would come back and wish he could just offer two rakas. Just two more rakas so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive him with those two rakas. Find something small in your life that you're capable of doing and stick with it. Eventually that will accumulate. Eventually that might be the cause of you entering into Jannah. That's why the Prophet sallallahu said, what is Aisha radiallahu anha narrated? That the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adwamuha, inqalla. You know, the most consistent of them, even if they're very, very, very small, how much time do you waste of your life that you could be planting trees and palaces in Jannah? That's change. Keep it simple. Sunnah. Have, have a wird. Have a wird. Not one of these wirds that's made up by some shaykh somewhere that you're going to be doing. No. Go to the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, and that's sufficient. Find the things that he used to do on a daily basis Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and incorporate that in your life. So that's number three. Keep it simple. Sunnah. Number four. Think progress. Why do I say this is so important? How shaitan gets you. He makes you think backwards. Is it halal to fast if you don't pray? Why don't you start praying and add that so that your fast can become validated? SubhanAllah. Think progress. Don't think backwards. Shaitan always pulls you this way and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always calls you forward. Make progress. Islam means progress. Number four is to think forward. Number five, and this is my last thought inshallah. Uh, one time a convert, two years ago, um, he converted to Islam in the Emirat actually, in the UAE, British convert. And subhanAllah, he was reflecting on the manners of the Muslims. He said, on your way to becoming a good Muslim, don't become a crappy human being. SubhanAllah. <laughs> becoming a more religious person should not make you a jerk. It should not make your character worse. It should not make you more condescending towards people. It should make you, make you more humble. It should make you more loving. It should make you more compassionate. It should make you more caring. Don't become a terrible person on your way to becoming a good Muslim. You know, subhanAllah, Rasulullah tells us what? What's going to be judged on the day of judgment? Your khuluq. That's the heaviest thing. That's the heaviest thing. Your character. And when you have nasty manners, that is a reflection that on the inside you are actually devoid of iman. Because if we look at the woman who the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, who prayed a lot of prayers, fasted her fast, did all the rituals, did all the good things, but she was abusive to her neighbor. Rasulullah ﷺ said, لا خير فيها هي في النار. There is no good inside of her, she's in hellfire. Think about that. لا خير فيها. There is nothing inside of her that's good. All of that was, was superficial. What really counts is when your inner beauty changes. That will reflect with your outer beauty too. And that's why Rasulullah taught us when we look in the mirror, we say, Allahumma. We ask Allah for change every time we look in the mirror. When you change your clothes, you ask Allah for a different type of change. 
What do you say? Allahumma kama ahsanta khalqi, the way you beautified my appearance, you know, you gave me these clothes, you allowed me to change into this new pair of clothes, you created me, you know, with, with some form of symmetry. What do you say next? Ahsin khuluqi. Correct, beautify my inside. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who experience real change, who search for guidance and who are guided by His mercy. Allahumma ameen. We hope you will continue to enjoy our content.